Healthcare spending is growing at an unsustainable rate, 55 to 6% per year. The U.S. spends way more than all other OECD countries combined from that standpoint in terms of their rate of growth. Yet life expectancy rate in the United States is not growing at a commensurate level, only outpacing eight of the 34 OECD countries. At our current trajectory, the U.S. healthcare system will consume about 20% of the U.S. GDP by 2026. This causes constraint on other economic development, job growth, investment in innovation, investment in distribution growth. So when you find yourself in a place like that, you have to pause and step back and say, how did we get here? Well, if we try to simplify the complex, we should simplify it down to understand there's really three things that could be done to improve health. First and foremost are addressing behavior and lifestyles. Second is addressing health challenges with a pharmaceutical intervention. And third is addressing a health challenge with a medical intervention. We believe that a sustainable approach is delivered through partnerships. Partnerships through the public and private sector. Partnerships that leverage micro communities, which I'll comment on a little bit in a couple of moments in the future. The societal debate that we are embarking upon right now is referencing the fact that over the last 30 years, we've seen some bright spots, but the actual financing of care continues to be a dramatic strain for our society. You all will recognize chapters we've gone through of managed care, where certain bright spots existed, but the constraint of access to care and the administrative burden actually outweighed its benefit. To a more recent chapter, where individuals more actively engaged and supported through, through their lifestyle, through their health care, through their chronic disease management, and where healthcare professional partners began to get rewarded based on the value and quality of the service they were delivering, not just for the volume of the services. Increasingly, that value-based care or aligned incentive program we think is mission critical. Today as a country, 90% of Americans have access to healthcare programs and services, either through employer-sponsored programs, Medicare, Medicaid, or other government-sponsored programs. Yet we still have somewhere in excess of 10 11% of our population that doesn't have access to programs. It's in excess of 30 million people. Two-thirds of that 30 million um, individuals have access to Medicaid or highly subsidized government-sponsored program, yet do not sign up or are not signed up. We need to step into that void and get those individuals signed up. Yet one-third or approximately 10 million Americans do not have an adequate solution today that they deem is affordable. And new innovations around employer-sponsored program and government-sponsored programs we think are important. How much of that is the responsibility of participants in the healthcare sector writ large and, and your partners, providers, payers, and how much is really just individual accountability, individual circumstances, societal determinants, whatever you'd like to call them. How, how can we change those things? So, so let's take um, a term that many people in here know, social determinants of health, um, whether we want to go Bronzeville or, or otherwise. We know that the data would show us that there are certain indicators that would suggest a massive health risk will take place. So up on the day house, you have blessings in a backpack, right? Um, their leadership is stepping up to a different challenge. They're stepping up, Brooke and team are stepping up to a different challenge because the data shows us that if children are hungry, they will not be healthy. They can't learn. They're gonna have behavioral issues. You're gonna have a massive amount of challenges. Well, food is being solved in many ways in the school. What happens after school's over? Blessing in a backpack is feeding thousands of kids over the weekend. Right? That's an example of taking a, an orientation of not admiring the problem, acting. And individuals are stuffing backpacks, and what do you see? You see improvement in academic performance. You see improvement in overall health. You see improvement in presenteeism. So to me, it's an example. It's a concrete example. There are bright spots. They happen one at a time, and it's controlled by the community, by business leaders, in partnership with government leaders to be able to drive it on a go-forward basis. But we can't admire the problem and look for, a, again, a national solution. We have to get quite localized in terms of being able to drive that. And that's where we've seen at Cigna some of the brightest spots, again, around the globe. It's localized, done with public-private partnerships, but localized. You still think the United States is one of the more exciting business opportunities for growth? Yes, no doubt about it. First and foremost, um, 
God forbid you have a health challenge, here's where you want to be. Yep. Um, there's no doubt about it from that standpoint. So with my comments that I made, I was, my comments, prepared comments are around the challenge to the future, but the U.S. healthcare delivery system is the most sophisticated healthcare delivery system on scale in the world from, from my point of view. There are other bright spots around the world. Secondly, the scale challenge of doing it for 330 million plus diverse individuals yes. um, in terms of evolving that from that standpoint, highly, highly exciting. It is. Um, and fundamentally necessary for financial vibrancy of our country for decades to come. Yes. So there's a opportunity set, there's a social mandate, mandate there's a national mandate if you want to look at it health challenges are even today in the united states a national security issue because it's projected that there won't be enough kids that are fit enough to serve so it fits under any one of the sequences from that standpoint what do you want to see the u.s have happen in the u.s healthcare system have happen at cigna help us understand the future yes so um from from my point of view we have the opportunity, starting from the U.S. and working our way out, and the U.S. is never going to have all the answers, right? We need to continue to learn and, 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 and whatnot. But the U.S., we need to flip it on its head, and actually we should desire to have the healthiest, most vibrant, highest vitality society in the world. We already have the most innovative society. We have an unbelievably diverse society. We have something that is admirable in terms of from an experimentation standpoint in terms of the economy. We need to flip the energy on its head and desire to have the healthiest, most vibrant, high vitality society. And as a company at Cigna, we challenge ourselves to be a force of good relative to that. As we like to say, our mission is to improve health, well-being, and uh, peace of mind of those we serve. We want to change our customers' lives for the better. So at Cigna, that's what drives us. What drives us is changing this conversation from sick to health, going from the introduction of the whole person, mind, body, health, introducing the concept of the fact that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a loneliness epidemic in our country. We feel that the largest study of its kind with UCLA, and not only does it show us that almost 50% of Americans are lonely, what blew me away is it's our youth that are the most lonely. That should take all of our breath away. So to me, it's a call to actually shift gears and say, we have to work to get our society healthier, mind and body, and then that, that actually is a driving force to creating a healthy economy, a vibrant economy, a, vi a vibrant society. And at Cigna, we're trying to do our part both in terms of nationally, locally, within our communities, et cetera. And I feel I'm fortunate to be the leader of the company right now to drive chapters of that change. And that's an incredible aspirational goal. If you could set up a framework of the healthcare system in the United States that would enable that goal, could you simply describe what that might look like? I'd do three things. One, um, every individual would have some level of incentive and disincentive tied to their lifestyles and behaviors. And only those who didn't have control over those lifestyles and behaviors would, would be pulled away from that. Two, 100% of every dollar spent in healthcare would be tied to some value-based outcome. The, the, our U.S. healthcare system is the biggest break, fix, volume-based funding system in the world. It has to pay based upon the quality of the outcomes. So engage the individual and support them. Reward the healthcare professionals and the delivery systems for the quality of what they deliver, not the volume of what they deliver. And then once and for all, harness data with lack of interoperability from interoperability to enable individuals to actually make those informed decisions and the doctors. Those are the three things. And if you only do one, it's lifestyles and behaviors because it explains 80% of all the costs in America. And like I said, there's four. So as we think about when we go home to our families, how much time are we spending on physical activity? It's four to five days a week of 30 minutes of a brisk walking that helps the heart, period. Smoking, it's yes, no. It's a yes, no. Drinking, it's in moderation. Food intake, it's in moderation. So it's within control from that standpoint, we've allowed it to be out of control and we need to simplify it and bring it back and bring it in control.